Hi, I'm Zitali and in this video I continue celebrating Mermaid by drawing a merman. So I've actually drawn this picture in real life, so I have a sketchbook which I sketch ideas in um, and I often use during art jams. So I actually already sketched this using a, a, my sketchbook and a pacer, um, so there won't be a sketching process for this video. We're just going to go straight to the colouring stage essentially. I have adjusted the layer itself, so this is on a solid white layer that's not got a transparent background which I will fix later on because I do actually need it to be a transparent background so I can add the background details and still have layer effects for the line art to affect the colours below. So I've basically just adjusted that uh, original sketch layer to have a coloured, uh, to make the sketch coloured rather than just the pacer colour um, and I've turned it to multiply so that I can add my colour layers below. I then just selected the, the whole uh, outline of the picture and did a colour dump and now I'm just adding the different colours into the character so that I know a rough idea of uh, how the colours are going to go and what it's going to look like. This is not based off any particular character or sort of theme or anything like that. I was just purely drawing a merman for mermaid so I just kind of looked up a bunch of different fishes and or some kind of colour palettes that I liked and decided to apply it to this fish man. Um, but yeah, so it's just it's just like a random character, I guess, uh, that I've decided to draw. I've moved on to my shadow layer, so I just used a fairly obvious colour so I can see where the shadows are going, and then I'll make adjustments to the layer property, so I'll change it to like overlay or darken or something. And then I'm using the smudge tool to soften the transition between the shadow layer and the coloured layer just so I could very quickly have some idea of where my shadows will go before I merge things and uh, start painting. I'm going to have to fix that background now uh, so because I want to be able to have a coloured background and turn off the properties for the layer above since I'll be merging them together. I do now have to erase away all of the background around the character. So I just do that by using the magic the wand select tool and then manually erasing around the edge of it so that I no longer have a white uh, the white background layer that was part of the original sketch. Now all I have is just the character um, which will be merged to the rest of the colours after I finish doing my highlight layer and I won't have to worry about having to draw it on top of the layer. I can go ahead and do what I normally do, which is create a layer underneath the character layer to do my background on. I was aware that when I made this original sketch that I made the fish portion of him a bit too small uh, and I am going to make adjustments to that but I decided that I would wait until I'd merged all the layers together before doing so just so it was a bit easier for me to get everything realigned properly. Uh, so I'm just selecting them now and putting them on different layers so that I can move them into position and then I'll merge everything back together again and just paint over any gaps that I've left uh, so that he doesn't, like, his his body, it looks like he'd actually be able to, to propel himself through the water. So now he's, his torso and his uh, arms and that are a bit smaller, his fish body looks larger and he would be able to propel himself through the water instead of, I guess, just floundering around. <laughs> And now that I've adjusted the proportions, everything is now on the same layer. So for the rest of this, it's pretty much all just painting on the character itself. So everything is one layer and I'm just doing what I normally do, which is just tear dropping colors and adding different colors in and then mixing them together and sort of smoothing it in between. And I just do it over and over again. There is a part in a moment when I'll try to adjust my scales. So I decided the very angular scales that I drew originally were a bit too angular. So I start by making sort of reference of where they would go by doing this cross hatch pattern. And then I drew in more um, rounded scales onto a separate layer. And then I'll delete the cross hatching template and then make adjustments to the scales that I have drawn. Uh, so that they look a bit more natural 
Um, but yeah, if you are trying to like do scales, it is a good idea to do sort of like a mesh patch pattern so you get the sort of idea of, of where they would flow with the body. With fish, it's a bit easier because they tend to all sort of flow in the same direction. It's a bit more difficult with things like dragons or um, lizards and things like that because they have arms and legs and their scales can change directions and quite often will be like lots of different sizes where fish tend to just sort of have the same sort of scales. They just may get smaller or bigger um, and just follow the flow of the body itself. If you're ever not really sure of, of how scales or feathers or anything really, anything that exists in real life, like for instance this fish body, uh, if you're not sure on how to draw it, then I recommend looking up references. I know I do reference stuff a lot, especially when I'm creating something from scratch. I'll look up something that is similar. For instance, if I want to make a, a dragon concept, then I'll look up things like large cats or maybe even dogs so that I can get an idea of how the muscles and the legs and stuff would go for the, you know, the actual body of it and then I'll look up stuff like bats for how the wings will go and snakes and lizards for how, how scales will go um, and you know maybe even a Komodo dragon which is the largest of the lizards to sort of see how face shape goes and you look, look up antelopes and goats to, to sort of figure out how horns go so uh, it's always a good idea to if you're trying to create something new um, to have a look at the world around you and use it as reference it will make your creatures and your creations look much more believable because they will actually be based on things in real life rather than just drawing completely mythical things like without using any kind of reference at all this is something i do plan on doing a bit more i am actually going to do what i call studies um, to try and improve my drawing ability so i'll basically choose a creature like I don't know, a horse and I'll just draw a bunch of horses from reference and maybe look up their anatomy and draw their bone and their muscle structure so I have a good understanding of how an animal like that would move and how its muscles would bulge when it walks or runs or anything like that and then I can implement the things I've learned into my fantasy creatures and make them more believable in the long run. This was the last merman or mermaid that I did during Mermaid. I did actually sketch this right at the start, but didn't finish it until this weekend. And I was kind of getting a bit fed up with coloring it by the end. So it's probably not as finished as some of my other pictures, but I was still happy with how it looked in the end. I did actually do a bunch of different mermaids during Mermaid, especially during my art jam. So I do like to run art jams with my art friends when we can. I find them to be really good. We sort of inspire each other and we play silly games. So for instance, uh, we played a random game where you have to roll a dice and depending on what you rolled, depended on what um, what kind of thing you had to draw. So I rolled twice on a plant of fruit sort of roller. So I drew a lychee mermaid and a Venus flytrap mermaid. I actually really like the Venus flytrap mermaid. I also rolled on just the normal mermaid, but rolled randomly for the fish. So I got this sort of like deep sea fish, which I decided to make kind of gothic because apparently it was also goth day. So. Um, we all sort of drew a slightly goth mermaid together as well, which was super fun. All of these little mermaid pictures were drawn in my sketchbook using a pacer and a, an eraser, like a little stick eraser. I then coloured them using Copic markers um, and uh, just added some highlights using a white paint pen. I also drew a shadow scale themed mermaid for mermaid. I did spend a lot longer on this one than on the, the shadow scale merman than this particular one so it's a bit more finished and has a fully completed background but I do have a video up for that one as well so it should be the one just before this one um, but this will be my last mermaid themed video for a while. Um, my next picture I'm I'm going to be drawing is probably going to be a bio dragon from Day of Dragons. Again, I know another Day of Dragons video, but I really, really like those dragons, so I'm sorry you're going to see a few more of them. 
if anybody would like to see me draw anything else then just let me know in the comments below i'm i'm fully open to suggestions i don't bite or anything i'm now moving on to the face which is always a bit of a struggle when i haven't drawn faces like uh, human faces in a while because I painted this one after the Shutter Scale one, I did sort of handle the nose and stuff a bit better. He's got a very square, sort of blocky nose at the moment, but I kind of like it, so I don't actually do much to the nose. Um, I just kind of just do a little bit, but I do super struggle with the eye, and it's kind of funny watching this video back now, because looking at this eye, this the eye on the uh, right, I actually don't think it looks too bad. It looks kind of looks fine. But for whatever reason, I decide it's not right and I spend a good chunk of time trying to fix that eye. Uh, and it's a bit of a nightmare, so you've got that to look forward to. Um, I'm sure that's coming up in a moment. I also decided I didn't like the white scales that I'd added to the fish, so I paint back over them and then reintegrate them into the body of the fish. So no more glaringly white scales, it's sort of just... You know, I'll add a bit of a lighter part to it later, but no more white scale. I also changed his mouth to look pouty, so he's kind of got this strange pouty fish, fish mouth now. Which is, I don't know, it's fine. It looks fine. I think he looks fine. Do you think he looks fine? Anyway. So uh, this this is the the eye changing zone. You can see now I'm gonna redraw it, and then I'm gonna redraw it again, and then I believe I turn the canvas upside down and try drawing it upside down just to trick my brain into working properly, uh, which doesn't work by the way. So in the end, I decide I'm gonna use the simplest solution ever, which is uh, just get a big fat paintbrush. And um, suddenly the direction of the water has changed and you know what? He's got a bunch of hair in his face. Whoopsie, no more eye. Yep, that's, that's the best solution I could come up with. All fixed. So now we've fixed the eye. I just uh, continue to have fun with the hair. So just adding lots of little strands of hair floating around and I mix in some of the colors around it um, into the hair. And here's pretty much done. I'm going to just add a really crummy shadow to this necklace, this mother of pearl necklace he has. And um, the arm was bugging me, and I make it too fat, and then I make it thin again. But I repositioned it, and then I add a shadow to um, the arm, so like the casting from the arm itself onto the fish body. And we're nearly done. I think I've, I've had it with this picture by now, so I'm like, just finish it, just quickly do the parts that are still staring me in the face saying please please fix me oh yeah the head's too big I'll fix that let's resize that just a tiny bit smaller uh, I think that looks better I think but yeah this is pretty much done I'm going to head on to the background now and I've decided because I can't be bothered doing much more on this that I do a simple background now my friend actually saw the sketch for this my friend Jane and she said I needed to draw sharks in the background so I stick to my promise and I do some silhouettes of sharks in the background so I'm just gonna have a little window to the sea here so I just um, use a circle tool and then I add a gradient to it so I've added three I think three or four colors in there and then I just quickly add a sort of like bunch of blobs there to sort of make it look like it's the surface of um, the water or the sea or something and just add some rays of light I'm gonna blur this so it doesn't matter if it doesn't look perfect because it's gonna it's not gonna be in focus anyway then I'm gonna create another layer to draw a silhouette of a shark so this one's supposed to be like swimming towards you so it's you know, this is kind of a bit of a funny shape but again it's gonna be in the background you're not gonna be able to see it much and I'm gonna make a second one anyway so I duplicate it and I fix its nose so it doesn't look like it's sitting on the same angle um, and then I'm going to add a border to it. So I'm going to use the symmetry tool on rotation. And I decided to make this seaweed sort of background, this uh, border, which I kind of liked to begin with. But the more and more I was drawing it, 
the more I hated it actually. So I spent a bit of time on this and then I'm like, you know what, I'm going to trash it and I just delete the whole layer. <laughs> so forget about the seaweed border, it's gone. And um, instead I'm going to make a completely different coloured border. I'm going to do red. Let's make a red border. There we go. Coral instead. And I think it looks better. I think the red sort of contrasts the rest of the picture a lot better than the seaweed I had before. I just add some bubbles in here. Uh, so I just like add sort of aqua and then I smudge in a bunch of different colors. Now, unfortunately, the smudge tool does not go with symmetry. So I had to smudge each of those bubbles individually. And then I just duplicated them and rotated them to add more of them to the outside. I make some final adjustments to the colour of the background and then I draw a white outline around the character so it sort of pops out from the background a bit more and it's uh, pretty much done. I just need to do some final adjustments here. I attempt to add a white outline to the, the red border but because I've turned the symmetry tool off it's no longer aligned with the rest of the character so I decide to not do that because it's too annoying to draw a line now, it landed every single one of those pieces of coral uh, and assign it and uh, crop it and it's done. Ta da! Here's my little fish man. He's a little fish man with a, with a dagger and there's sharks. Yay! Yay, mummy! Well, thanks everybody for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop me a like. If you want to see more, subscribe to my channel. I also have a Patreon if you'd like to support me. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!